many languages. But uh, it is time, guys. It's time. Let's get right in this spawning into the top right position. Playing for Quantic Gaming, it is going to be as our Blue Terran player. It is Apocalypse. And spawning in the bottom left position, coming out for Team MVP, it is none other than Dream. So, guys, two Koreans facing off. Uh, to start off our Acer Team Story Cup match on Star Station, TVT, very volatile matchup. So many different crazy things that can happen. Um, it, it's, it's almost... An, completely unpredictable but we're gonna have to see what exactly uh, these players do choose to open with um, it's 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 largely largely become uh, most players choosing either to open with Reapers or factories uh, most builds that don't involve opening with a Reaper or a factory are just have had a lot of natural vulnerabilities to builds that do so I wouldn't be surprised to see a fast gas from either of these players apocalypse is gonna go for that barracks first here at the top of that ramp and dream getting his barracks as well and dream already going for the super fast 12 supply gas same actually for apocalypse so both of these players are poised to go for very fast reapers and in all honesty on a map like star station to keep in mind the tournament version of this map we do have forced cross spawns so these players uh, know where the other know where each other are uh, they're just going to use the reapers to scout what exactly it is that they're doing and, and also to make sure it's not any kind of cheese like a proxy reaper proxy marauder anything of that sort now uh, scouting scv is going to go out for dream uh, apocalypse not sending out any kind of early scout so he is looking a bit more uh, a bit more focused on uh, possibly just this potential mid game aggression but a lot to see scv is actually going to go out now after the barracks complete so at the, he's actually heading towards the tower. It's kind of interesting. I mean, does he does he know that it's not cross spawn? Um, possibly looking to proxy something like a factory. Um, Dreams SCV though is going to be heading over to Apocalypse's base pretty pretty quickly, so should not be any problem in uh, in terms of finding out what's going on. But with the supply depot finishing, I feel like Dreams is going to find out very quickly that Apocalypse is going for this Reaper opening, <laughs> the supply depot push-ups, and we have uh, another barracks coming out for Apocalypse. So. Our Quantic Gaming player looking to get a bit aggressive here. Um, a second Reaper going to come out uh, for Dream. It is in production. The first one was on the way to Scout. So Dream's opening looks like he wants to go for an expansion here. He's building up quite a few minerals and sending that SCV to the natural. But um, Reaper for Apocalypse does take out Dream's Scout. But now Dream's Reaper is going to be following in pursuit. Uh, he might want to wait for the second one. But this is going to be so... Uh, tricky it, it can be very difficult to deal with these kinds of plays now of course with defenders advantage it can be not as hard but having this command center on the low ground provides a lot of areas for apocalypse's reapers to run around and deal damage now the second barracks is complete you have double reaper production so dream he, he needs to scout this out it's, it's very important that uh, he, he recognizes this build and the command center is starting for apocalypse so he's not looking to go all in with this he just wants to put on a lot of extra aggression but Dream darting around with this Reaper. He will spot the command center under production uh, for Apocalypse. He's actually going to pick off the SCV building that. Some nice little tiny bit of damage being dealt here. But uh, right now, Apocalypse is waiting on those additional Reapers to complete. He does have two. The third Reaper is out now. So uh, he has a Reaper counts advantage. But uh, uh, Dream's going to get in and kill another uh, SCV. One Reaper does die for Dream. But Apocalypse has not yet begun work again on, uh, on that command center. So he's putting in some work now has four reapers out and this is where the two rats reaper becomes so strong he's killed off dreams reapers all dream has back home one reaper factory about to complete he's adding on a bunker in his main base to defend against this but the command center of the natural is going to finish fast enough that he's not going to uh have to worry about anything like being hit with uh ha having his command center denied um, at all so he's looking pretty comfortable in that regard but uh, we're going to see what exactly these reapers can do he is uh Starting up and down around that ramp, trying to find somewhere to do some damage. Uh, looks like we're going to have a tiny bit of a pause from Dream. Hopefully everything is okay. And uh, we'll get back into this game as soon as these guys are ready. And I have to say, uh, looking at the, the follow-ups that we have going on for these players, see a little bit uh, Dream saying that there is a tiny bit of lag. Um, hopefully semi-resolvable. Um, but in terms of the follow-ups, we have another barracks coming in for Dream, possibly to just get up units to defend this, uh, as well as a starport. So with the Hellions coming out as well, Dream looking to try to defend this with uh, just Hellion Marine, really, and using these Reapers eventually with this bunker. 
Um, but in the meantime, Apocalypse adding on the Tech Lab, adding on a third barracks. So he's going to be going to a pretty standard bio transition out of this. And now game resumed. So Command Center is about halfway done now for Apocalypse. We have uh, these Reapers, though, doing a bit of damage, taking out that Hellion as soon as it comes out. And the SCVs being pulled to deal with these Reapers. Apocalypse just getting in here and dealing so much damage with these Reapers. And, you know, it was just so important that he killed the Reapers of Dream because he just has so many fewer units to deal with this. And, I mean, at, at this point, he does have the bunker. He can always fall back to this, and he will, but... He is going to be a little bit vulnerable at his expansions. The SCV is constructing this. Barracks picked off. Uh, Dream just taking so much worker harass. Going inside the mineral line now. Picking off even more workers. Let's look at the units killed. Nine SCVs. Eleven dead so far this game. The worker count now. Ten up for Apocalypse. Even though that expansion was up faster for Dream, the extra Reapers for Apocalypse dealed a ton of damage. And now, looking in a very comfortable position ahead of the mid-game, uh, is our, our Quantic Gaming Terran player. He has the Tech Lab up, he has these barracks set up for a transition, he's getting an Engineering Bay as well. And we could see Apocalypse just start that Stimpak upgrade and move into a regular bio play. So on Star Station, there's a lot of open areas, so there's a lot of airspace for drops. There's a, a pretty wide arc around the third base area. So bio play pretty strong, but these Reapers are going to duck in again from the left side of the base. The bunker already salvaged, picks off another couple of SCVs. These Reapers are really, really uh, paying for themselves. It's huge dividends. Another SCV, two more, possibly a third, fourth SCV going to die here. An Apocalypse, so far he's killed 17 workers, looking very sharp, 28 to 16 SCVs now. And and Dream is going to throw in a third command center, and in all honesty, this is not a bad decision. Uh, he needs to recover his economy in some way. If he stays on two bases at this point, he's going to fall behind very quickly. And the question is, is Apocalypse's follow-up going to be too much? He's adding on another tech lab on this barracks, very interesting. Could be looking to swap that onto the factory for Tinks, but no, it's going to be a fast combat shield. So, uh, with this setup of getting the combat shield at this point... He's kind of denied himself the gas to go for his starport. So, Apocalypse is looking like he wants to play this a little bit more macro y um, in, in terms of his setup, but uh, I'm a little bit surprised he's getting this Widowmine and not any not any kind of uh, starport. But now the Reapers for Dream are going to come in here, put a bit of pressure on. He does have this medevac with uh, three Hellions and two Marines in it, but looks like Apocalypse is more than enough to thwart this little bit of aggression for now. So, he's not under any real threat. So, feeling, uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, at this time, but um, yeah, Medivac trying to dart around at that naturally. He's just trying to find an open hole, but there's a missile turret here waiting for the Medivac, taking a lot of damage. Now it's down about less than half health, trying to stay alive. The Reapers, though, for Dream, he's going to be able to continue to dart around. And important enough, he did scout out the transition. He knows it's going to be that bio play from Apocalypse. Uh, but at the same time, Dream looking like he wants to head into bio as well, but his stim so far behind. Um, compared to Apocalypse's, Apocalypse is actually about to about to complete his stim, so this is going to be pretty difficult for Dream to hold. Uh, he doesn't have any tanks out just yet. Apocalypse moving here with his bio force has some Marines back at home to defend against these Reapers. Um, and now he's just going to send one Marine forward. There is a Widowmine here. has a lot of AoE potential to kill a lot of these Marines if he gets too close to the ramp. But there's just not enough here for Dream. The bunker immediately goes down. He's going to press toward the ramp. The mine gets a good hot hit off. But uh, that actually isn't able to kill the Marines. Combat Shield finishes literally just in time to save four of these Marines' lives. And now Supply Depot going down. Apocalypse stepping into the base. There's the GG from Dream. And Quanta Gaming will take game number one in this best of nine uh, in our Acer Team Story Cup.